Duke up 52-35. Duke stepping out of bounds there. Last possession. So Temple basketball, or rather Temple basketball here on the turnover by Duke. 11-22 remaining in regulation here. Winner looking for a matchup with Stanford and a steal by Cook, and he's fouled. Jalen Bond with the foul. And how about the rotation there defensively? Quentin Cook read that double team on the baseline and knew that the outlet pass was in a position where he could take advantage and create the turnover. Now Temple has battled on a 10-point game at the half. They've been terrific defensively, but Duke with so much talent has been able to keep them at arm's length. And a chance to add to their lead here as Cook finds Okafor. And Jalil, wow, what a move. I mean, that when you see moves like that, that's when the eyes open. And you're talking about incredible skill from the big man. How about going left? With that play, that was extremely impressive there. And he altered that shot of the cozy. Jones That's a nice five. Fires to the corner and Cook hits the three. Tyus Jones, another assist. That's his seventh. Setting up Cook, who has 11 now. He's at three three pointers. And Duke starting to put the hammer down. Felt the wrath of their coach, no question, at halftime. And they have come out the aggressor in half number two in this pro Duke crowd enjoying every minute of this one. You watch Okafor with the nice footwork to get around and to finish with his left hand. I mean, that is impressive for a 6'11 guy to get through and then to be able to finish GA with the offhand and make it look like a George Gervin finger roll. It did, and, and, and you can see Watson was not ready for him to go left, was expecting him to go left shoulder. Instead, he hits him with that quick move and able to finish there. But he and they, Duke, have been really impressive. They just, they keep coming at you, and then eventually they try to break your spirit, and that's what you've seen here in the last four minutes. They've been able to kind of open this thing up just because of how focus they've been on both ends. Missed 10 shots in the first half. Four for five here in half number two. 16 points. Jolly Okafor goes to the bench for Duke. That brings back in Marshall Plumley. And Uchionia back in for Temple. Halfway through the second half. Oh, and every shot contested. That's going to be a whistle on Suleiman. Suleiman just back in, picks up the foul. Free throws coming up for the Temple Owls. Josh Brown. Four out of five from the line, and Temple's went over La Tech on Monday. And he misfires on the first. Now the next generation of performance competition is on True TV. Fake off. All new Mondays at 10, 9 central. Only on True TV. Temple with 44 turnovers this season. Been a big part of the story here tonight. Temple has 15 on the night tonight. As Brown hits one out of two. Temple's going to look a lot different in about a month, they're going to get a couple of players who are not eligible currently. Eligible. That's Suleiman. a nice move by Suleiman. Well, Temple has Jesse Morgan, a transfer out of UMass. He'll be eligible beginning December 18th. And Devin Coleman, another Philly guy who transferred from Clemson. So it's will have a different look. They'll have some depth in the backcourt. Plumley rips that rebound away from the cozy. Cook a spin and the cozy knocked it away and that's going to be out of bounds on Temple I think off the leg of Bond. Duke ball here 59 36. I'm impressed with Cook. 
just to be able to lead this team with energy, being able to offensively knock down shots, and now you see his role has, has changed. He started off as a two guard, now he's playing a point, and he's understanding I'm not going to keep shooting, trying to facilitate and get other guys some good looks. And, and think about it also. I mean, he's had to play with three one-and-done guys who were guards, and, and you know, his role, I should say two one-and-done, and then you bring in another highly talented McDonald's All-American in Tyus Jones, and yet he's still been able to figure out a niche where he can be impactful. And, and listen, a catalyst in a lot of ways for how far this team's going to go. They talk about elite teams in college basketball, guys. And you look at Duke, Kentucky, they are so talented. Who else finds their way on that list for you guys? I like Louisville a lot. I mean, you know, not a lot of people are talking about them. Uh, but Rozier and, and Jones in the backcourt and, and Montrez Harrell is, is an animal on that front line. Yes. And, and Matt Yang, I think, has gotten better. Oh, I think they might have got away with a foul on that triple well, there. Sulebaugh wanted one, didn't get the call. Uh, Wisconsin, yes. to me, could be. We're talking about Smitty. Yes. I know you're very high on them as well. Wisconsin is a terrific team. They bring back, I mean, heck, they could have won it all last mm -hmm. year. I mean, that game against Kentucky was epic in the Final Four. Yeah, they feel like they should have won it all. They've got a little chip on their shoulder, yeah. the Badgers. As happy as they were to make it to the Final Four, the first in the Bo Ryan era, they, they feel like they've got unfinished business. Well, you talk about they have inside, out, nice. And cozy. cozy. But then they have stability at the guard position. They have Sam Decker that mm -hmm. has grown two inches mm -hmm. over the summer. Uh, and then coached by Bo Ryan. Yes. I mean, you talk about coach, veterans, skill, and you talked about Arizona as well, oh, I was Greg. just going to say, don't Arizona, as, as, as much as we talked about, Arizona might be the best of the bunch. I mean, they are. Nice shot there. That's about Matt Jones, Matt Jones. knocking down that triple. But, yeah, Arizona, man. Brandon Ashley's healthy this year. Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson's gotten off to a terrific start. They got the, they're super fresh. And Stanley Johnson, who's terrific. And T.J. McConnell, the transfer. That senior point guard has just played terrific this year. He's an 8.6 rebounds, 6 assists with all that firepower. So watch out. Well, Duke figures to be right in the conversation. They have a 22-point lead. Opening game of the Coaches versus Cancer Classic presented by Northwestern Mutual.
Coaches versus Cancer Classic on True TV. Brian Anderson with Greg Anthony and Steve Smith. Seth Davis, our reporter. And a 22-point Duke lead. Temple with the basketball. Temple trying to hang in there. A team that is hoping to make a run and get the pieces put back together in the American Athletic Conference. A dreadful year last year. Just 4-14 four and 14 in conference play. Suleiman got caught in the air. Cummings with the steal. And he'll give it up to DeCozy. Three on one break for Temple, and they convert. And just haven't been able to get enough of those plays where they can create some transition opportunities off of their defense. Just seven points off turnovers for the Owls. Got a chance to add two more here. Brown take it on Jefferson and scores and a foul. Wow. Josh Brown, <laughs> crafty with the left. And what's going to frustrate Coach K on this is I, I'm sure he was thinking of not having to come back with his core guys, thinking about tomorrow night, but because of this little run here, and there's still 6.20 to go in the game. So just a nice finish with the contact there by Brown. He's going to have to come back with his big guns and try and seal the deal. Winslow and Okafor back on the floor. Josh Brown, who scored 13 of his 17 points in Temple's last game in the second half. Good rebound. An offensive board, but blocked by Okafor. And Ichionia got denied, and that's going to be a foul on Justice Winslow. Uh, so we're talking about the top teams in the country. And G.A. and Smitty looking at uh, Kentucky. They're off to a 4-0 start. Duke, chance to go to 4-0 here yeah. tonight as well. How about the Longhorns? The Longhorns are, I got a chance to be special. I mean, huge loss for them, Smitty. Losing Isaiah Taylor out four to six weeks, I guess, with that sprain wrist. But that's a team that, you know, they returned basically everybody mm -hmm. from a year ago. And, and you know what? Rick Barnes had a similar situation to what Dave Rice had with UNLV. Yep. He cleaned house mm -hmm. before last season, brought in a whole new crew of kids that have great character, tremendous work ethic, and, boy, has it paid dividends for them, a top-10 team this yep. season. You know, the horse. Uh, Brian and G.A., even though they lost this game, I thought Kansas, mm -hmm. you know, they got an onslaught against Kentucky. Yes. But I think at the end, this team is going to be pretty good. They're a solid basketball team. Uh, and I think down at the end, they'll be okay. They, well, you know, I was in Lawrence last week, and so I got to spend some time with Bill itself and, and, and their group and went to their practice. They're going to be good. You just sometimes, we saw what, you know, when you have that many young guys and they're going to be put in positions where they haven't been yet, it takes some time to get that familiarity, that confidence, and that comfort level. But if there's anybody that's going to get it out of you, it's going to be Bill Self. And much the same what I think Michigan State. I think you'll see when you come come January, when you see Michigan State and Kansas, they're going to be completely different than what we're seeing here early on. And they're still going to, have, I think, have a legitimate chance to get to the Final Four. All right, let me throw another team out there for you. And Seth Davis is jumping over the table to get in on this conversation. But, Seth... Talk to me about Gonzaga right now. Well, I don't want to be like, you know, Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown because it seems like Gonzaga's, you know, really good this time of year and they get into the conference play not always challenge as much. And, you know, we see all these other mid-major programs, guys, VCU, George Mason, Butler, Wichita State, break it through to the Final Four. I think if any of Mark Few's teams can do it, it's this one because they have the size, they have the experience in the backcourt, and they have a very special freshman coming off the bench in DeMontis Sabonis mm -hmm. at 6'11". Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Jalil Okafor in terms of excellent fundamentals, can score around the rim. This might be Mark Few's year, although I obviously just jinxed him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good call. And, and really, when you start to look at the landscape of college basketball, you start to, to pit the teams with the, the talent, the young talent like Duke, Kentucky, and then some of these other teams that are putting together these, these programs of guys who have been in the program three and four years. And you look at Wisconsin and Gonzaga and, and a number of the other mid-majors that uh, Seth mentioned. But Duke, nice. excellent move to the glass. And Will we, Cummings. And we talk all of a sudden now, 14, 14 points. Point still game. five and a half minutes. Momentum is a hard thing to recover. And Duke right now trying to get back that mojo, if you will, that they had during that stretch where they took, took control of the game. Approaching five minutes remaining in regulation. 
Big defensive possession for Temple and Okafor. Can't get it to go and a stop for the Owls. And they climb a little closer here. We'll see. Down inside to Cozy. Got a mismatch in there, but Okafor comes to clean it up. Stays in bounds. And here's Cook. Head up. He'll take it himself. High arcing nice. shot. Knocks it down. Just when Duke needed a big bucket, they get it and from big, their senior. Yeah, but also a bit, that big defensive play, Brian. That was the key there. Okafor comes over for the block because they would have had that easy deuce there with a chance to cut it to 10. Felt like Okafor could have thrown that one 10 rows deep. Instead, <laughs> it stayed in play, and it ended up in a bucket for the Blue Devils in transition. It's the first time I saw it in this game, Greg, that he came over aggressively mm -hmm. to come block a shot. That's what I saw in that play for Okafor. Brown runs into a wall, and Wenslow, Nicosi for three, not there. He's struggled shooting the ball tonight, Nicosi. Had some looks inside, but nothing from distance in this game. Four minutes remaining in regulation, and a whistle and a foul on Temple. Onichionia gets the foul as Winslow with the take. Nice job by Will Cummings to get into the lane to finish, but this is the play we were impressed with. To come over, Okafor, keep it in play, nice block, and that led to this bucket by Cook. He always hit timely buckets yes. for Duke. Cook with 13 points. Okafor is the team leader with 16 as Winslow knocks down the free throw. He has 14. Justice Winslow, native Texan, in his first year with Duke. The freshman has been impressive tonight. 15 points for Winslow, 6 of 8 from the free throw line. You know, he, he gives them that edge. You know, he just gives them a toughness that they haven't had for a few years there. Cummings much more aggressive here at attacking early in the shot clock. That'll be a block, and that'll be free throws coming up for Will Cummings. Duke keeping the owls at arm's length. Brooklyn, New York in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic.
Back in Brooklyn. Free throws coming up for Will Cummings. And hits the first. True TV will make you believe the unbelievable, the Carbonaro effect. All new Thursdays at 10, 9 central, only on True TV. The Carbonaro effect. The, the Carbonaro effect. I like the Anthony syllables. <laughs> 66-50, Duke up 16 with 340 remaining in regulation. Temple made a, a many run, but Duke immediately pushes it back up. Well, I'm looking forward to the matchup tomorrow if Duke finishes things off here. I am. You got well. Duke uh, and Stanford. Uh, again, could not have been more impressed with how Stanford looked nice in this day. Quinn Cook, high <laughs> off the glass. He is that really sweet. He's you having know, a good night, huh? And he's, Great night. He's playing like a senior, too. Yep. You know, he's accountable. He's going to come out and show up and set the tone for his team. Cook with 15. Well, Stanford and their head coach, Johnny Dawkins, it's going to be his first ever matchup against his alma mater. It's hard to believe, but... His uh, first one, seventh year at Stanford, and one of Coach K's favorites. Yeah. And they're going to go at it tomorrow, and Jaylen, a lot of intrigue with that one. Yeah, Jalen Bond, not to cut you off, Jalen Bond just fouled out of the game. But you're right, that, that one is going to be interesting. It's funny, you couldn't really ask Coach K or Johnny about it because both were so focused on right. tonight. And that's one reason why both have had so much success. You know, they don't allow themselves to get out of the present. You got to focus on what is in front of you. And they probably still won't think about it until after the game. Mm -hmm. bit, it's going to be a nice matchup. It yeah. is. Stanford, uh, the players get after it. You have Chase and Randall being able to handle the pressure of the Duke guards. Then you have some bigs down there. But I'm also looking forward to see how UNLV responds against this Temple team. I tell you what, they're better because Temple's physical. Yes. They, they, you know, like UNLV, they, they do struggle.